Ryan and Thassa, a Cyclonic Rift, and one main deck domestication. Two of our lesser known players still having a very, very nice tournament. And whoever wins this one has the potential to draw into the top eight. Yeah, so very important match. The Junk Aggro deck, really interesting. This, I believe, is going to be a pretty tough matchup for him. Mono Blue tends to be good against the just green and white creature aggro decks. And at the end of the day, that is what Crawley's deck is. A Cloud from Raptor to start things off here as Crawley did take a mulligan to six. He's going to play a Temple Garden on tap, so now he's going to move down to 18. We'll see what he has to play on the second turn of the game. So far, so good on the mana front. Yep. And Does... Fleece Main Line is a nice threat. Yeah, Fleece Main is, is pretty good here. Hopefully he can dodge something like a Tidebinder Mage. And it looks like he's going to. Prosper and Weird, right? Evolve the Cloud from Raptor. In for one comes O'Donnell. Yeah, he does a nice job of, you know, fading the Tidebinder Mage. I mean, it, it can be a disaster. Again, I'm in a complete agreement with you. This is the kind of deck that Mono Blue Devotion beats up on. Right. You're, if you're casting a lot of creatures and not too many kill spells and just kind of playing good stuff, yeah, Blue can run right through you. Two more damage. And now a Life Bane Zombie. It is very unlikely that this will hit, but here is the grip. It's, uh, actually, it's a pretty good one. The last card is actually <laughs> what made it the good one. I was going to say an unimpressive one when I saw the Mutavault and Nykdos on the island. Then the Nightfell Spectre and the Thassa make this hand quite good. Yeah, this is... Blue can just curve decks out. And I think... So Devin is probably a little confused right now on his opponent's side of the board, right? He just played Fleece Main Lion into Lifebane Zombie. Yeah. But one of the advantages to Mono Blue is... And this is like kind of what I would say a definition of like a level one deck is... is like, is your deck doing something just, like, generically powerful? Like, so, Mono Blue has a great matchup against dirtling around. You know, if, you, if your deck is just, like, take, give, you know, giving your opponent time, like, Blue will run through you. And I think we might see that this game. It's an Ichthos, which means we're going to see a Nightfail Spectre. That'll evolve this into the red zone we go by O'Donnell. So two damage will come across. Crawley's going to go down to 13. And what he's really doing is setting up a big Nykthos turn, depending on what he draws, because he has three, four, five, six blue mana symbols out there. So he does have six mana next turn, which is enough to play Thassa, make Frostburn Mirrored unblockable, and pump it once. If he chooses to, remember, Thassa will evolve Cloudfin Raptor on that turn. That's already pushing seven damage. It could push Jeremy down to six and get a free card next turn. Nykthos, to me, is a beautiful one-of in this deck. You know, the situations where you draw that, you kind of sculpt your game around it. It lets you do some crazy things. But because it is a legendary land, I can't imagine wanting a second copy of that. Yeah, there are a couple of hazards. As you mentioned, first of all, it's legendary. So this deck really can't tolerate having two of a legendary land. Second of all, you are playing Night Veil vale Spectre. And this deck really wants, when it has a Night Veil vale Spectre, it really wants to cast it on turn three. An attacker with Lifebane Zombie is going to bring O'Donnell down to 17. Crawley trying to catch back up. One card you do see in his hand, it's a split card that we haven't seen a lot of, and that card is Ready Willing. Yeah, so Ready Willing is actually a pretty good card here in that it gives him potential to win a race that he otherwise couldn't. Mm -hmm. For those of you not familiar with the card, one of the parts of it is that it gives all your creatures death touch and life link. So if Crawley can get enough power on the board, he can swing and basically Azorius charm with it to give his whole team life link and maybe steal this race off Devin. Yeah, that's a unique way for him to try to steal a game. But we'll see if it does come to that, because, again, a Nikos activation is going to allow O'Donnell to play a Nightfail Spectre, play Thassa, evolve his Raptor, and get into the red zone with a couple of Flyers here. O'Donnell certainly threatening lethal next turn. Yeah, Thassa is just terrifying for these green decks to try to work their way through. Nightfail Spectre trigger, that's going to net a Bermaz. Can't cast that one. Going to deploy a Mutavault and just kick the turn back. This will be interesting for Devin. If one of the things that I'd be trying to do in my head is figure out what my opponent's up to. Like, I, if I'm Devin, I'm thinking, yeah, I'll probably win this game, but but what's going on here? Okay, my opponent's, he's playing a lot of good creatures, a lot of re guys with, like, which are really high on the efficiency level of things. Hey, you're trying to get, you know, some information about, okay, what am I going to do as far as sideboarding concern? What is, you know, again, Crawley up to? I mean, we know it's just a junk aggro deck. You know, it's just a good stuff, pretty good mana, hope it all kind of breaks your way deck. And it's not, you know, a junk mid-range deck like we've seen Jeff Hoogland play before. So you do see these pretty good creatures out there. But if you're Devin, truthfully, I think, you know, you, you try to think about what they're up to, but you also think, I'm just going to do my thing. He's got to stop me from doing my thing. And he's shown in game one, he's not capable of doing that. Honestly, how many of these cards that Jeremy has cast does Devin even care about? 
Well, I mean, that, right, that's the beauty of the mono blue deck is that because it's so power, it's game A is so powerful. Um, if you are not acting with, interacting with mono blue, mono blue probably doesn't have to care about you. Because I, if, if I do my thing and you do your thing, it's likely that the mono blue deck is doing the better thing. Mm -hmm. Life Bane Zombie going to come to the red zone here. Of course, unblockable due to Intimidate. So Dono's going to go down to 14. All Crawley can do, though, is pass the turn back with some mana available and try to bluff something here. Yeah, he. I don't even think he wants to show Ready Willing at this point unless it wins the game. The card is enough of a left field hit that you only want to show it if it's winning. You know, your opponent won't be playing around it. And it's likely that even through the life gain, Devin can just unblockable enough of his team. Oh. Yeah, and to win. And here he's going to overload a Cyclonic Rift. That works just, just, for, just fine, just, too. Sure. Through a Nykthos, a large Iconic Rift bounces everything, and Devin O'Donnell's going to very easily win game number one here over Jeremy Crawley. Mono Blue Devotion up a game over Junk Aggro. This is a very tough pairing at this point in the tournament for Jeremy. So now the question is, what does he have in his sideboard to turn things around? And you've got that in front of you. All right, well, let's start with, yeah, absolutely. Let's start with his sideboard. So Mono Blue typically, it doesn't have a bad matchup against Mono Black, but it's certainly Mono Black can steal games from it. And a lot of that is because Mono Black has a lot of creature removal. So I think, what Crawley will be wanting to do here is try to remove those creatures from Mono Blue's deck. Because at the end of the day, if, if each guy has one creature standing, it's probably true that Crawley's creature will be better. So you look at the cards he has. He has Doom Blade in his board. He has two Bio Blights. He has two Satessan Tactics. That can actually help a lot here. Um, and I would think all of those would come in. Outside of that, if he wants, he can try and cast and play one of these three unflin unflinching courages to steal a game. But there's a little bit of a danger there that if he does that, that his guy would get rapid hybridization or cyclonic rifted or tidebinder maged. So it's a little bit, there's some give and take there. He doesn't have a card like Skylasher to just throw unflinching courage on. Yeah, no, uh, no kind of cheap free win. It sounds right. like to me, you know, the Sky Lasher plus Unflinching Courage, as you did mention, you know, no sign of it looks like Miscutter Hydra hiding out here either. No, none of the protection from blue. And a lot of times these green decks have had a really bad mono blue matchup. And so you'll see something like four Sky Lasher, two Hydra, four Unflinching Courage in the board where they just, they go on the cheese you out plan because blue really doesn't have a way to interact with that. It's very hard for them to beat. Um, but he doesn't have that kind of sideboard. He's going to have to play fair magic to win here. For O'Donnell's side, I mean, it's pretty straightforward stuff, honestly, for a Mono Blue Devotion deck. You got four gain saves, two negates, two dissolves, two dispels, two domestication, two Jace Memory Adept, and then an, ad an additional copy of Cyclonic Rift to go along with the game-winning one we saw just a minute ago. I expect to see another Cyclonic Rift come in, and I expect to see more domestication co uh, come in. From what we saw, the creatures that Crawley played, well, domestication looks good on all of those. Yeah, all of them had power, three or less. Um, there's a couple, by and large, Devin wants to keep his main deck in place, but there's a couple of cards he can board out. Biden of Thassa, not particularly great here, as he, his creatures likely won't be getting in, then that card advantage won't be as relevant. And so he has about three cards he wants to board in, about three cards he wants to board out. Looks like a pretty good swap. And I do think that O'Donnell is heavily favored in this matchup. Again, doesn't mean it's impossible for Crawley. You know, there's a chance that Jeremy has played against and beaten Mono Blue at some point during this tournament. But this is a very, very tough one here. So if you're O'Donnell, you're already up a game. The matchup does look pretty good. you got to be pretty happy with how things are going because, again, coming into this round, O'Donnell is in seventh place. Pretty good tiebreakers. If he wins, could be draw next round. Yeah, I would think a win here will put him in, can put him into top eight. Um, one thing about these players, so I had the, was going over the top performers in Legacy here. Neither of these players, I believe, were in the 7-1 or better, which means both of them have had stellar standard records for this tournament. So when you see something like Junk Aggro, um, that's a kind of deck to which, to me, could, in the right metagame, could be a really powerful tool. Especially, I could see a deck like Rabble Red having a lot of trouble with this. You know, any deck that's playing, first of all, a bunch of green-white creatures can be tough for an aggro deck. On top of that, you know, you have a lot of game against the green decks because, hey, you're playing Lifebane Zombies, you have Thought Seizes in the board, you probably have a lot of game you know, against some of the most popular decks, I think where you fall short is you have to dodge Mono Blue if you're playing something like this. It wouldn't surprise me if a lot of people coming in this tournament were hoping to dodge Mono Blue as well. It seems something that sort of seems like something that's been consistently happening on the Open Series is, you know, my deck is pretty good against Black and, you know, probably good against Rabble Red, probably all right against Blue White Control in the Revelation decks, but very, very poor against Mono Blue. And I think that might be where this Junk Aggro deck does kind of line up. Yeah. It's tough. I mean, you can't beat everything in standard. We already know that. You mm -hmm. can beat most things. Um, but, you know, Black, for example, has a pretty tough matchup against Rabble Red. 
especially in game one. They can dedicate sideboard slots if they'd like to, but that makes their matchups against other decks maybe a little bit weaker. So you can't beat everything. A lot of the time people say, well, I'm not going to try to fade mono black. That's not realistic. So maybe I'll try to fade mono blue, and that might be what Jeremy Crawley has tried here. And it's probably worked out pretty well for him so far. But again, he has a tough matchup. He does have some nice sideboard cards to bring in. You mentioned the spot removal and Satessin tactics. So we'll see if he's able to draw. Yeah, so we're underway for game two here. Like you said, top eight of the Invitational. Very much on the line here, certainly for Devin and probably for Jeremy as well. Yeah, Jeremy coming into this round was in ninth place. So could certainly be live here. Yeah. It's a lot of standings math that's going to have to go on here. Actually, it's possible some of our X fours are still live as well. We'll get to that after you know when we go into the last round. Yep. A Temple of Malady is how Crawley's going to start. Top card does stay on top, so Donna will draw. Picked up a copy of Rapid Hybridization. He's going to start off with a flyer. It's a Cloud from the Raptor. Always big in this matchup to start on turn one with something. Yeah, well, especially Cloud from the Raptor in a deck which doesn't have very many removal spells. I mean, this Junk Aggro deck doesn't. This is the same, very akin to playing a Delver of Secrets on turn one. You know, this is going to be a flying two or three power creature. Looks like it's another copy of Cloud from the Raptor, and O'Donnell will pass the turn back over to Crawley. He does have to watch out. There are two Bio Blights in Jeremy Crawley's board. He does have a response. If Crawley goes for the Bioblight, he can rapid hybridize the one he targets, so at least he doesn't lose his entire board. He gets to evolve that other Raptor, too, if that happens. There, yeah, so, so he has a play, but it still could get blown out pretty well here. Lifebane Zombie is going to show the info. There's a Tidebinder Mage, Domestication, a Frostburn Weird, that rapid hybridization we spoke of, and an Island. Great hand for Devin, mostly because of the strength of one, it double evolves the Cloudfin Raptors, and two, it has a Domestication in it. And it's questionable whether or not Jeremy can just race that. So here's the thing about Mono Blue. If your hand is good and you don't have one of your payoff cards, be it Thassa or Master of Waves, even though he just did pick up a Thassa for the turn. <laughs> but if your hand, when your opponent looks at it and it doesn't have Thassa or Master Waves and they think, man, that hand is pretty good, well, you're in a whole world of trouble if they draw one of their great cards. Right. Those are definitely the two top cards in the deck. And the best part is they can win without them. Yeah. So there is Frostburn Weird. Again, that will evolve each Cloth and Raptor. Two damage in the air. Crawley's going to go down to 16. Crawley will draw a card for the turn. Look like another copy of Temple of Malady. It's dangerous here. If Crawley doesn't remove these Cloudfin Raptors, the Thassa that's in O'Donnell's hand actually is a 5-5. O'Donnell can play it. It will evolve the Cloudfin Raptors. He'll get to have a Thassa on the board. A lot of problems here will happen. As it turns out, it looks like Crawley's hand is a triple Lifebane Zombie hand. That's a card that really just doesn't cut it against Mono Blue. We have seen players leave this in. Owen Turtenwald doing that with Mono Black Devotion against Mono Blue Devotion. That'd be kind of beginning around, you know, the fourth quarter of last year. We saw him kind of employing that strategy as a 3-1 unblockable threat. But that works out well as a clock when you're killing their other stuff. Right. But as it is, you know, like this life, this three drop doesn't even match up well with Blue's two drop. And so that doesn't seem like where you want to be. He, if he wants to be doing this plan of making life and zombies right, he needs to be killing things. Crawley going to take a look at his top card from that temple, decide where he wants it to go, and it looks like it's going to stay on top. I think at this point he's going to need to kind of try to steal a game with something like Unflinching Courage on this Lifebane Zombie hit you for five. He's got to get creative to win. He's just going to pass the turn back, so this represents a removal spell. You can see an Advent of the Worm in his hand right now, but one mana away from casting that. And there's danger here, too, because even if you made that play, O'Donnell actually has a rapid hybridization in his hand. It wouldn't work. Yep. What I'm saying is, like, if I'm Crawley, I think you have to just play into rapid and say, boy, I hope you I hope you just don't have any answers to this giant creature. Yeah. It looks like Crawley's holding up mana to go for a Satassin Tactics, which is going to get equally blown out by rapid hybridization. And O'Donnell, opting not to play Thassa, just goes ahead and revolves his guys so that he can leave up rapid. Yeah, and, of course, you know, the thing here is that he knows... Probably knows that he has rapid hybridization because he's solid from the Lifebane zombie. So, you know, now he's got to play into it in such a fashion where he knows it's going to get cast, he knows it's going to be a problem, but he's got to do something. You know, there's really no way for him to work past this rapid hybridization without getting ruined by it. Yeah, what will be interesting is how he uses the rapid. So O'Donnell can use the rapid on Lifebane zombie when Crawley goes for tactics, or he can let Lifebane Zombie try to fight something and then wrap at his own creature. Uh -huh. Or he could just never cast it because he hasn't really been given much of a reason to. He could be okay, he could be okay with the exchange of Lifebane Zombie plus Atessin Tactics to kill one of my creatures. That's fine. Yeah, that's probably also fine. 
looks like two, four, five damage is going to come across. Looks like no pumps there from O'Donnell. Yeah, and he's just going to pass the turn back. And did actually have the fourth blue source. Mm -hmm. A little surprised he didn't play it and pump. Yeah, pump once. Yeah, still in a great spot, though. Crawley at 11. The dangerous thing, too, for Crawley there is that he passed the turn with three mana available, didn't do anything with it. When you're playing against a deck that's full of one drops and is an aggro deck, you probably can't afford to just not spend three of your mana on a turn. You know, it kind of feels like if they curve out, you kind of have to curve out, too, to keep up with them. Yeah, I mean, right now, Crawley has cast one spell and O'Donnell has cast four. Yeah. And almost regardless of matchup, if that's the spell count of, like, spells resolving in Magic and you're on the one side, you're probably losing. Mm -hmm. Like, that one card you played had better be really good if it's going to compete with my four cards. It's a painful Temple Garden. Down to nine. That's a Loxon on Smiter. That's big, but it doesn't fly. O'Donnell really doesn't have to care about this card. And it, this is just where Blue Star, like, o O'Donnell can just ignore everything that Crawley is doing here. There's Thassa. Thassa will evolve both Cloud and Raptors. Now we know how tough that is for Green Decks to beat. Yeah, they have six power in the air. It's going to knock Jeremy down to three. Jeremy will have to kill both Cloud and Raptors. I don't believe he has the cards in his deck to do it. I'm not sure he does either. That doesn't even take into the equation of, like, you know, having to kill Thassa or trying to, you know, slow the devotion down, something like that. This is where he could use some sort of wrath effect to maybe reset things, but. He would need a Wrath effect here, because Thassa plus any creature is just a nightmare to deal with at this point. Thassa will make everything unblockable. He's going to go for Satessan Tactics, it looks like, and I, I don't even... At this point, I don't think Devin lets him. Do you think it's worth fighting over now? He's got a Tactics to Smiter. Smiter doesn't have haste, so yeah. this actually doesn't... This is... He can't fight anything with it. Yeah, this works out quite poorly for him. Now, he is going to... Looks like rapid hybridization this. Well, okay, so that actually did work out. Yeah, I mean, for Devin kind of a bit of a misstep there because, you know, the Smiter can't fight in that situation because, it, as you mentioned, it is summoning sick. Devin just has an embarrassment of riches here. That he really he can, does. He can spend his cards however he chooses, and it should be fine. But you're right there. There was no actual need to wrap it there. You know, unless there is something like a zero mana... And there's nothing that, because he was tapping out for Yeah, it. yeah, and he's going to extend the hand. Devin O'Donnell's going to win this match over Jeremy Crawley. Two games to zero. Very dominating fashion there for Mono Blue Devotion over Junk Aggro. It's just a great matchup for Mono Blue. It's the perfect pairing for Devin and the worst pairing for Jeremy at this point in the tournament. It never looked like Jeremy was in those games. No. And it's not, that's not through any fault of his own play. No. Or no, it's just, you look at both their opening hands and you say, I don't see how Jeremy's going to win these games. You get in a situation like this where you're making a deep run in a tournament, you know, obviously you want to play to the best of your ability when you're making a deep run, but your, your other thought process is, you know, I hope the pairings break my way. Mm -hmm. I hope I get paired against a deck that is a really good matchup for me. And for Devin O'Donnell, that's what just happened. He, I mean, those may have been the easiest standard games he's played all weekend. I'm pretty sure Devin could, when he, he had these decisions as to, you know, what to leave up, what to play each turn.